So yeah, Josh, uh, as I was saying previously, if you could dethrone uh, D&D as like the, you know, go to tabletop for most people to like most common parlance and TTRPGs, would you? And if you did, what would it be and why? I uh, personally don't have a good answer for this. I've thought about it like literally all day. Um, I, I don't think I have an answer, frankly. I do have an answer, although it's maybe maybe a little bit of a cheating answer. Depends on how you go for it, how you take it. Um, yes, I would dethrone five E because I think D and D is too. It's got too many. It's too beholden to its past. It's too attached to this big company. It's too attached to its brand. So I don't think it being the intro tabletop game is particularly healthy. Like it, it's kind of a half joke, but I saw some, I, I can't where I saw it, but I think it was today. Actually, I saw someone make a post that they were like, yeah, I was having, I was getting a friend into vampire, the masquerade. And I explained oh, everything yeah, I saw this. about their, the setting and everything. Uh, uh, you know, and they seemed really into it and everything. And then the character they brought me was an elf druid for session one. And it's like, yeah, that that's like, oh, the, the comparison somebody was making, they were like, imagine if you met someone who only consumed Batman material, like, and nothing else. <laughs> and then it's like, you hypothetically could do that, but you'd have a very skewed perspective on what you know, pop culture media is like if the only thing you consume is Batman material. Okay, now that's basically tabletop, but with D&D. Um, now, that's going to be the case no matter what, right? There's always going to be the intro thing that sort of get like, it's a, you're going to have a skewed opinion of how a certain media is based on the first version that you interact with, right? If the first video game you play is Call of Duty, you have a certain opinion of video games versus if the first video game you play is Kingdom Hearts. Um, but D&D has such a stranglehold that it's influencing like 90% of the player base and that wouldn't inherently be a problem, but I think the game is sort of stuck in some of its archaic ways because branding, right? Like there's certain things they won't get rid of because of the brand, right? Uh, stat modifiers the d20 you know like the classes like there's things they will not get rid of they will not budge on because it's part of the brand so because dnd so beholden like that i would dethrone it and uh, quite frankly i would replace it with a game and i'm not saying this game specifically but i would replace it with a game more like dungeon world in terms of it's still a fantasy game. It still has some of that like sort of fantasy heroic elements, but I want it to be more open ended, more fictionally focused, less mechanics first and to not be so beholden to an old school brand designed by a dude in the 70s who had some cool ideas. But, you know, his ideas have been updated and iterated upon. We don't need to beholden ourselves to Lord Gary Gygax, the patron saint like, you know, Things have changed. We've evolved the hobby in the same way that we don't make all video games exactly the same as the original Mario, just because, you know, that was one of the most famous video games back in the day. You know, like things get updated. Um, so I would rep I actually a, a kind of a good modern example is kind of a game like Daggerheart. I would replace it with something more like Daggerheart. Oh, you now know again, what? probably I not even thought about Daggerheart. Like. Daggerheart, go on. Not, not a hundred percent. I think there's elements of it that that make it not a good intro game, but I think it has a lot of strong elements to be a good introducing game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I think you're right. I think Daggerheart has just enough, uh, lol, do whatever you want going on, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, because but still has some really interesting and thought provoking ways of handling the game. So yeah, that's fair. One of the best. One of the one of the best ways to get people into tabletop, right? Because it's such a strange it's a hobby that has very little comparison to any other hobbies. It's kind of a board game. It's kind of like a video game. It's kind of like playing make believe. It's it's kind of like playing 
you know, it's kind of like when you picked up sticks and pretended they were guns when you were like five, you know, like it's it's a weird hobby. It's hard to explain. So when you introduce someone to it, part of, you know, the sales pitch is often you can do whatever you want. And then you try to do whatever you want. And then D&D tells you, no, you can't, in fact, do whatever you want. Right. Like you can, but also you kind of can't at the same time. So, yeah, what most people end up doing when they're introducing new players is the new player describes what they're doing with no, uh, no, uh, not understanding, no, um, they don't shackle themselves with the rules. I, I don't know what the word I was looking for there. You know, they don't shackle themselves with the rules in any way. They just describe what they're doing and that's it. They just say what they do. And then so you as the GM get in the situation where do you tell them no and then explain all the rules minutia or do you just kind of make it work in the moment to keep them interested and say, yes, you can do that, but, you know, we have to make an adjustment here or there or whatever. And, you know, generally, I think saying yes, but uh, is probably the move. But there is a little bit of that caveat where you say, yes, player, you can do this thing, but you have to do X, Y and Z. And we're kind of breaking the rules here. The problem is that that player is going to keep trying to do that over and over again until someone either tells them no finally or they learn the rules themselves. But someone could tell them no and then they could be like, eh, never mind, fuck this game. You know, like they're going to butt up into the rules at some point. So you could be growing a bad habit, but at the same time, you don't want to crush this idea. You don't want to crush the imagination and the interest because that idea of do whatever you want is a big part of it. So you have to foster the interest, but also keep in mind there's some back end caveats. So a game that's more fiction first, like a dagger heart, like a dungeon world helps you a lot because that game is already trying to do that in its base rules. So mm -hmm. that's what I would replace it with. And I'm not, and, and you know, like there's still a place to have your D and D style, like tighter rules, your pathfinders and all that, that still can exist. But yeah, I don't think it's the best way to introduce, especially combat like D and D combat is so not intuitive as a new player to tabletop. It's, you know, like, it's just, it's strange. If you've never interacted with the hobby, it's very odd. And if you've never played board games, let's say you're somebody, right? You have a, you have a friend who's huge. You're, you're a person who's never played D&D. You have a friend who's a massive tabletop nerd, right? You've never played a board game. You've never played a turn-based video game. You know, you've never looked at a Warhammer. You, none of that shit. D&D is going to be so un like you're a let's say you're a cod bro who plays Call of Duty and FIFA and that's it. And then your friend convinces you to play D&D some fucking how who knows how. D&D combat is going to be I mean all of it but combat in particular is going to be so unintuitive, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't it like doesn't make sense really. I mean, I distinctly remember having a conversation with a friend. She was talking about we were talking about like Pokemon and she was mentioning a, a, a Marvel. I think it was a might have been a Facebook game, actually. I think this was like before mobile games were as big as this, this was when we were in like high school. And she was yeah. like, I don't get it. It's so stupid that I have to like because it was a turn based game. Right. So she was like, it's so dumb that my character attacks and then I have to stand there and let my character get punched in the face. Like, that's not how fighting works. And I had to try to explain to her. I'm like. No, that's not literally how fighting works, but the idea of turn base is you're abstracting the concept of fighting and slowing down the individual moments to, like, represent a symbolic version, right? It's not a literal representation. That doesn't make any fucking sense if you've only played Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that's why I think D&D is kind of a weird intro game. And, you know, obviously it... It's working to some degree, but I think it could work better. You know, I, I saw I actually now as you were talking, I've been putting some thought into this. I think I do know what game I would want to dethrone D&D. &D. Okay. And it's not one I think you would think of when it comes to me. Uh, OK, I actually think Fabula Ultima would be a really good. Uh, like a really good swap up for D&D. &D. And I'm gonna tell you why. The game, it does put a lot of onus on the GM, right, for things. But it, it also abstracts most things that aren't vital game mechanics. So, like, like races or species or whatever, they're like, 
we don't have any, you know, if you want to be a dragon person, you can be a dragon person as long as it makes sense in the setting and you have relevant abilities that, that help you with that. Uh, or do you want to be like a Lalafell? You can do that. But where the game gives you a lot of really interesting stuff is the way that classes work, the way combat works. And combat's very simple. It's, you know, you don't even really have more than one action. You have your action for the t for the turn, which which can, you know, rather than D&D &D where it's like, okay, I use my action. Can I do anything else? And they're like, do you have a bonus action? And you're like, I don't know. What the fuck is that? You know? The way Fabula Ultima does it, it's like, oh, you activate your your like arcane summon. Okay, when your arcane summon's activated, now on that same turn you can do this thing, and if that happens, then you can do this thing. It shows you a, a clear path from point A to point B and how you do them. There's no real, I don't know what do help. You know what I mean? That goes it's on. It's not as couched in mechan in game mechanical terms. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and it you know the game is built around building a character your way, mm -hmm. and it. It's very clear that it's like, you know, try things. If you don't like what you're doing, talk to the GM. You know, usually they should just let you re-switch your class because the whole game is about experimentation. You know what I mean? You don't have to feel locked into things. And that can be good or bad if you have a min-maxing munchkin. It's like, no, game says I can change my class whenever I want, Dungeon Master. And you're like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, if you're struggling and you're not having a good time, that's not free. You, you don't get to fucking meteor... Shadowbringers trailer job switch on the fly, fucker. Yeah, you're not playing 14. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I I can see that. My 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 one caveat still being, if it's a turn based game when it comes to combat, I still think that is a barrier. I think that's a pretty tall barrier for a lot of people. Like, I don't like that people. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to shit on everyone's opinions here, but there's a subsect of people who refuse to play any game that's turn-based because they think the idea of a turn-based anything is stupid, right? Now, granted, you look at those same people and go, okay, so is chess stupid? You know, you kind of caught them on that one, but there's a lot of people that this idea of a turn-based thing they just think is, like, dumb and is automatically bad, right? <laughs> It's, it's more than just chess. If any board game I mean, really any board is turn-based. Yes, like, yes, yes. But like, you know. Fuck, Uno is turn-based. Like, <laughs> Right, cards. Yeah, all that. But people have this stigma. Again, a lot of this is the COD bros or, you know, the Fortnite kids. You know, they, they have this stigma about this idea of turn-based. It's the reason Final Fantasy has stopped being a turn-based game. Although, arguably, Final Fantasy hasn't really ever been a turn-based game. But we don't need to get down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... You know, there's there's an appealing to that crowd for sure. You know, more buttons, more colors, more do things, pretty colors, yay, boom, bomb. So I think a big barrier to entry is the turn based nature of tabletop can be a problem. And if you tell someone, I think it's a it's a particularly frustrating friction because you say to somebody, you can do anything you want. And then they try to do anything where you want and you turn around and say, well, yes, but actually no. <laughs> right. In a video game, there's no uh, there's no promise of you can do anything you want. Right. Everybody knows video games have limitations. One of the big selling points of tabletop games is you could do anything that you want. So when you go to do anything you want and then immediately you're told, actually, I lied to you. Never mind. That causes a very strong like as the kids say you get the ick <laughs> you know oh god <laughs> like you do you get the ick like you get this immediate like oh well that's shitty you told me i could do whatever i want now you're telling me i can't do whatever i want what the fuck dude so taking away that turn-based element and having a game that works like an apocalypse world like a dagger heart like a dungeon world you know that open-ended fiction first style gameplay brings that friction way way down there's still a little bit of like well you can't you know you can't just like fire a laser gun at the sun and blow up the universe or whatever but it turns that friction way down so that's the one that's one thing i think would help a lot if the primary tabletop game people were coming in from wasn't this turn based and it's not even just the fact that D and D's turn based. D and D is turn based and also like tactical focused because it comes from war gaming. 
You know, like it came from a game called Chainmail, which played like Warhammer. You know, like that's a very specific kind of hobby that a lot of people do not jive with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of people look at something like Warhammer and they're like, cool. So you're moving a bunch of plastic men around and rolling dice and saying that the plastic men are shooting each other and having an epic battle. But you have to have 60 bazillion different rules to have their cool epic battle. And you go, yeah. And they're like, why is that fun? <laughs> you know? Mm. So D&D comes from this very weird place that not that many people are actually that into. It's kind of a miracle D&D's gotten as popular as it has, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I could see that. I think, you I, know, a big chunk of why it's become that way is because people are moving away from the well, rules, everything, and just it turning it into improv, which is that's pretty much how I describe D&D to people now. It's like, I mean, it's basically improv with a set of rules. I mean, that's how I describe it. That's how I describe tabletop in general. But I mean, it, it is also worth pointing out the game originally was a lot more open ended, too. And then it got more and then it got more focused. And now they're trying to kind of move back towards the open. And like, there's always been a little bit of that, but it's like, I don't know. D, it almost feels like D and D got popular in spite of the game, as opposed to be, it got popular because of the game, you know, like it's like a lot of the things that made it popular were kind of outside of the game and the companies control themselves. It's weird. It's a very weird scenario. Don't it, and and a big portion of it is also just the fact it's the oldest one, right? It was the first tabletop game. It was first to the party, so it gets seniority. That's a huge part of it, undeniably, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I think it, it has this weird ability of like, well, we're sort of grandfathered in, to, to, so we're allowed to do weird, not, you know? We're allowed to be kind of stuck in our ways. Yeah, because we're grandfathered in. Well, yep. right, because it's it's that's the thing, right? It's like, you know, generic cliches suck unless you're the first one to do it, and everyone's like, ah, the good old days. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah, tropes are dumb unless you're the make the one who makes the trope. Yeah, I mean, I. Hmm. No, no thought. Don't go. Don't. Oh, I lost. <laughs> God Jim. damn it. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if it's if I'm if I'm too if I agree as much with the turn based stuff. I think I think you need to there needs to be a clear distinction, right? I, like, I feel like D&D doesn't have a good distinction between when you're doing the role play heavy. I just want to kiss all my hot friends and then the it's time to kill things. I mean, it does. And a lot of people. The initiative it it role. does, but you know, I don't think that stops as much people as it should like there's like again i think fabula ultima works because the majority of its rules lie in the combat and everything else is abstracted so to me and i could be wrong about this but to me it feels more like okay so we're doing combat it's no longer time to kiss the homies good night it's time to you know do my one thing per turn or the thing that leads to other things or my you know whatever i can do and then I wait patiently for everyone else to do the thing. In Fabio Ultimate's combat's way quicker because you know, the action economy is super simplified, but it streamlined itself. So it, I, I feel like, I mean, I haven't run the game. I plan on doing it at some point. It feels like it should go quicker. It should feel more snappy in a way that like, maybe not Daggerheart, because Daggerheart still felt a little stuffy at times, but we also, it was our first time playing it. So that's fair. Ooh. Well, it, it feels like it, it could potentially be as fast as Dungeon World, where it's just like bada, 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 like one thing after the other. I mean, maybe. I don't think the speed is inherently the problem. Especially because, I mean, early level D&D is pretty quick, you know? Um, it, True, it is, yeah. But like that idea that most of the rules are in the combat and then the rest of the game is pretty abstracted. That's supposed to be how D&D works, too. You know, like most of the rules of 5e are in combat stuff right they are combat centric but mm. you know yes i mean like sometimes the game i mean maybe it's not as as abstract as fabula ultima i don't know but that's why i didn't that's why i didn't necessarily 
pick any one specific game to dethrone D&D and I just kind of said a style of game because I don't want to necessarily beholden to any one specific game, but it's just more about conceptually 